While I did say that the Ace Attorney franchise would be the next games to cover in terms of reviews for the channel, especially after I had finished the Mega Man X marathon, I figured we have a little detour first, you know? Now for those that have been here for a while now, you know that a couple of weeks ago, yes, weeks ago, I had talked about a game called 30XX, a Mega Man roguelike that honestly left me very speechless with how fun the gameplay was, especially when I laid out my first impressions, which naturally led me to where we are today. My personal take at least, you know, after all, this is my way of introducing you guys to this video and honestly, I've been doing this for three years and I still don't know how to make a proper intro, like god damn. Which again, major, major shout outs to Battery Staple Games for providing me a review code for this. I really enjoyed my time with this game and I'm just happy to keep talking about it, you know? But yeah, 30XX, now this game has some pretty cool history for an indie title of all things. So back in when I would say like 2014 or maybe 2015, there was this game called 20XX that was kind of like the Mega Man game that people really wanted at the time, notwithstanding that, you know, Mighty Number no. 9 was also getting some marketing at the time, but let's not kid ourselves here, we know that game was born of failure frame 1. With 20XX though, this was a totally different issue as it saw praise when it debuted, at least based on my research on it. Yeah, in reality, I never really had a chance to play this game because, well how should I put this delicately, um, I didn't know this game existed. Great, what a fantastic way to look good in the eyes of the PR team, yeah way to go. But look, I digress, while not knowing it's prequel, I can still commend the efforts of battery staple games of at least giving us something for the Mega Man fans to indulge, especially with adding the roguelike elements into the mix that are just as equally presented with 3XX here. Which yeah, by the way in case you haven't pointed that out yet, yeah roguelike, as in Hades or Binding of Isaac, that sort of deal. So for all my years playing video games, as do anybody that's 23 years old, um, I never really experienced a roguelike game before. I mean, I do have Hades on my Nintendo Switch, but if I gotta be honest with you guys, never really understood the appeal of these games, never understood why people love them, and honestly, in terms of Hades, now that I mention it, yeah, you're not seeing that for a while. Okay, never is bad phrasing because I actually can understand why people love the challenge of playing a game multiple times and seeing how they can tackle things a little bit differently, you know, allowing for immense replayability. I mean, I've seen Alpha Rad fumble multiple runs on his roguelike Emerald playthrough, so I know there is fun to be had in these kind of games. Well, sort of. Again, with Hades, given how much praise that game has gotten in recent years, I see that appeal. Like, don't worry about that. But I personally don't think it was suited for me to dive into. You know, not yet at least. However, thank God for 30XX because I can completely understand the love for that genre now more than ever, both with gameplay and also in visuals, which I kind of want to address first with this one. For those who have watched my Mega Man X review marathon, you know that Mega Man X4 specifically is my favorite Mega Man X game of all time, and one of the reasons why is because of the visuals. That game presented gorgeous sprite work that I don't think can easily be replicated nowadays, at least without some proper dedication. I especially love the animation and fluidity that Mega Man X4 presented, similar to also how I talked about Sonic Mania back when I reviewed Sonic Superstars. There is just something about sprite based work that you know gets the job done in certain cases. And with 30XX, I'm proud to say that I absolutely love the care to detail with the sprite work and quality because goddamn battery staple, you guys must have been on some high octane crack to be delivering this high quality sprite work. Seriously, this game looks phenomenal with how it tackles its visuals, opting for that Mega Man XP as one feel, but obviously modernizing it and allowing its own art style to flourish. And my god, flourish is like the best word to describe it, as you are really going to have your eyes be stimulated with how well done the game feels. Especially when you look at nowadays when certain games haven't, well haven't really gotten their proper checks and balances before being pushed into store shelves. No, here in 30XX, everything is so beautifully well done, and with such careful detail while also paying respect to its original source material, that is of course the Mega Man and Mega Man X games. To compare it to another indie franchise out there, 30XX is very similar to Freedom Planet where those games were inspired by the classic Sonic games with presenting a faster platforming sprite based game that also shines in its own identity or how even Spark the Electric Jester does about the same thing but in terms of 3D Sonic. God, now having said that, I really have to play these games for the channel at some point, don't I? 
30xx here also kind of gives their own twist to how a high paced Mega Man platformer should be like and you know what I absolutely commend that to the fullest like bravo battery staple games you absolutely outdid yourselves here. But of course, we have a lot to cover here for this one indie title. So naturally, if you're ready, I'm ready, we're all ready. Let's finally dive into 30XX and see the true scope of this absolutely amazing indie title. The year is 30XX, of course, and the world has now become a world filled of a robotic dystopian society where humanity, they completely lost the will of freedom, shackled by an entity known as the Synthetic Mind, causing corruption in the bunch that is kinda expected with a name like that one. Upon the rise of this rogue gallery who now controls parts of the world, it isn't until our protagonists Nina and Ace awaken one more time to deal the threat, now realizing that the world they left behind isn't the same as it was a thousand years ago. Hold up, a thousand years ago? What? What the hell, you guys? You're, you're out there sleeping more than Zero did before the events of Mega Man Zero? Like, you guys must be rusty. Like, go get some WD-40 in them boots. God damn. After their nap time is over, it's where the game properly starts as knowing the threat they face, Nina or Ace gather their gear, face them head to head, and basically do some Mega Man shit as they fight the final boss and save the world from its global threat. Or at the very least, that's what I think the story was anyways. These guys gave me a storybook like in the Google Drive file, right? Yeah, so the game doesn't actually tell you these things, like, at all. Most of the synopsis was through some basic Google search and wiki pages that managed to give me an idea of what the game's story is all about, and hell, for spoilers here, towards like the end game portion, like they just randomly threw a multiversal subplot where a giant ass demon dragon shows up to destroy the world. Hey, wait a minute. Still, knowing that these games were inspired by the Mega Man franchise, I don't think the story even mattered as much when at the end of the day it's all about playing as the good robots and they have to fight the evil robots in order to save the day and all that kind of stuff. Basically, a by the numbers plot that doesn't go anywhere, doesn't need any introduction, and honestly, doesn't even need a proper conclusion. And in some ways, this actually doesn't really affect the overall quality of this game because in all honesty, you're not playing this game for the story, are you? No, what you're really here is for the gameplay, because this is what's most important regarding this game's quality, and man, is this one of the funnest games I've ever played, period. Seriously, one thing to really praise right out the bat is the feel to this game being a Mega Man platformer that also has its own identity, as I stressed before. Sure, the main character Nina looks like a blonde female Mega Man, but you can still see her personality as she dashes and shoots her way through each stage, oozing a sense of optimism and getting things done. She was my go-to because I felt like for my first time playing, I thought it was better to play as the titular character, but also seeing Ace act as like the zero for this game, I definitely want to experience more of his gameplay some other time. And also, when you beat a boss as Nina, I love how she does like a little thumb up pose. Like it's so funny to me. Like look at her slaughter this fire monk like it was nothing. Like yes! you really love to see it. And the boss fights, man, these guys' designs were super cool. Like I get this is inspired by the Mega Man games and I am gonna reiterate that point a lot, but these guys are just on a whole other level. Favorite bosses I would say was absolutely Absolution, mainly because of her design being this witch-like Venom robot, which I'm sure someone out there has a fetish for, all right? It's clearly not me, all right? I just gotta be, I just gotta be honest. But I loved going through her stage with all the lasers and the platforming and how it was mostly vertical platforming mixed in with some puzzle solving elements that was just very rare for a platformer like this one. Then there was Experiment 9 which was also a very fun battle with the whole anti-gravity gimmick of its stage being a part of it and how it was just like a constant back and forth of hitting the damn dude but it was more about placement and just learning to hit where it counts if anything. And that gravity gimmick wasn't annoying either like they actually managed to make one of the most awkward gimmicks to play in a video game super fun like that is awesome. Legacy was also also pretty fun in terms of moving through the arena and how she would throw these laser beam projectiles your way so also moving around and your placement was a requirement as well and her stage man, that was so visually stimulating it was like combining the elements of Astro Man from Mega Man 8 and even some of the good qualities of ground scaravage's stage in Mega Man X6 and just giving this one hell of a grand time you know absolutely love this stage Zen Primus by the way that fire monk I mentioned previously like okay so Fire-based bosses in Mega Man games always deliver on these cool and badass designs, and seeing a Buddhist temple stage being its premise allowed for this sense of uniqueness regarding the world-building of 30XX. 
Hell, the game's stage layouts and atmospheres do a pretty damn good job by presenting what the world of this game is like far better than like any other AAA title out there that I've played in like recent years. With its insane detail backdrops and fun platforming challenges, the stages have these unique themes to go through. And again, the boss encounters add such immense world setting like never before. Like, I think this would be the standard I would love seeing Mega Man do personally, as 30XX really demonstrates that you can do so much in terms of presenting a futuristic setting without so much compromising the level of care and detail to it. The gameplay mechanics and controls also, they're so buttery smooth, you guys, really capturing the good old PS1 days of the Mega Man X franchise, given that this was again likely the main inspiration. And I love, again, dude, the level of sprite work that this game provides it's that damn good. Stages also love to give this adrenaline rush the moment you enter them, and that was something I felt constantly as I wanted to explore what these levels offered, especially considering the fact that their layouts change because of that roguelike element to this game. Yeah, in case you wanted to play this game, no two files will be the same in terms of difficulty and stage layout and that's really good incentive to just wanting to keep playing and playing this game because in some ways it feels like it never ends. And there are very long levels by the way, extending to so many ways to reach the end goal and see what cool secrets you can collect in the process as you're pushing through your run or going at it like a traditional Mega Man game. Sometimes there are even these extra goodies like an extra act that requires you to play it safe, literally it says it like right there, in order to earn a cool reward at the end. And there are even these gauntlet modes allowing you the need to just get that buster ready to go and charge into action before fighting a cool mini boss at the end. Oh and there's even the small arena challenge that they have like oh dude i really love these okay because in a way it prepares you for the boss fight that was approaching with the hordes of enemies that are just being thrown in your way and the such like there's just this immense level of curiosity about 30xx's level design that just keeps me wanting to play more of it and because of this is where i find so much praise with again this game's overall quality it knows what it wants to do and the game expresses that without so much trying to push for something to make it different. And that is something that I really love a lot here. And since again, this is also a Mega Man inspired game, this means the basic Mega Man content is here too, as you got the A baddies to take care of and Ozzy gained their abilities. But aside from that rather obvious observation, of course, you have to remind yourself that 30XX is also a roguelike, which means that you got a lot of other cool stuff to use too. Now keep this in mind again when I said that I never quite experienced a roguelike game before, with Hades being on my belt at some point in the near future, assuming how much you want me to make a review out of it, I don't know, but this game, again, really made me understand the whole genre of it. Okay, well, to a degree. Technically speaking, I kind of played this game on its mega mode where it allows you to play the game like a traditional Mega Man game. You can die as many times as you want and you also get to keep the upgrades you collect during your playthrough. And out of the four playthroughs I did for this game, almost all of them were in that mode. Save for one of them, okay, I gotta be honest here, I definitely did do an actual roguelike run before I decided to head back to playing this in mega mode because that was all I really wanted to do in this game. Now, does this effectively make the roguelike elements of this game pointless? In my case, yeah, it does. But you gotta remember, I mainly viewed this from the lens of a Mega Man style platformer. Maybe when I play Hades, I'll see what an actual roguelike is like. But right now, as we speak, I just wanted more Mega Man, you guys. I, I gotta be honest. But to get back on track here, at least, the upgrade system in this game, man, does it make this super fun to play. Because of this game's encouragement of replayability, and lots of it I should stress, the upgrades you collect in each playthrough makes sure that you have a different experience each time, making sure that not one playthrough is one of the same. The game does this by basically splitting it into two completely different upgrade systems. You got one called Augmentations or Augs, where these are like the standard upgrades that you get to collect that allows for faster mobility, stronger attacks, and obviously more health and energy upgrades. The pretty standard stuff that that you would normally find in like any other game. But I also love that they have a unique attitude to them, especially this one where it tells me to go really fast in a description. 
Wait, are those Sonic shoes? Oh, oh, oh God, Nina, whoa, whoa, slow down there, girl. You're going too fast. What the hell? Then you also got the cores, which the best way to describe these are kind of like the armor parts in a Mega Man X game where they enhance the moveset that you get to use as you progress through the game. It can be with the help of an air dash, a double jump feature, a dash attack, a hover ability also, anything really that you've seen in the Mega Man X games, they're basically here as well and they can be stackable too as long as you have the right amount of cores to do so. But yeah, man, like this is easily what makes this game super fun in my opinion. Again, regardless of if you do an actual roguelike run with a classic mode or do what I did with Mega Mode because it's just so well done. Like the more you play through the game and collect these power ups, the more you really see the difference in how you progress through the stage and the means to do it. And what makes this even better is how randomly generated the stages can be based on each file you have for it. Seriously, if this is how Hades is like from a gameplay perspective, perspective, then yeah, I can definitely see why people love this style of genre so much, and seeing this with 30xx definitely illustrates that point. Of course, again, I, I did play most of this on Mega Mode, but as I already said, I for sure want to do a proper roll like run and maybe see those elements some other time. But bottom line, I absolutely love this game. I love everything about it, and as someone who got this per courtesy of the folks at Battery Staple Games, I wish I bought this game when given the chance. Hell, I might just for the PC version since it's only 20 bucks, but I'm telling you guys, it's the best 20 bucks you're ever gonna spend on a game in my opinion. It's got the thrills of a Mega Man game, the fun challenges of a roguelike, and it's just a great time overall with how well made this game feels. Seriously, that's how I feel about this game, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna feel the same way too. For now, I think it's safe to put a temporary pin on all the Mega Man stuff, especially now that the X Marathon is officially done, it's officially finished, and maybe the next time I do Mega Man stuff, it'll probably be the Mega Man Zero games down the line, but you know, the, the year is fresh, so stay tuned for all of that, because the next time you get a review for me, we're going to court, baby. In case you weren't aware, I was talking about the Ace Attorney games, you know, you know that that's still a thing that I gotta cover, but hey, you know, Crazy ass sentence to end off the video, am I right?